And we're back with some more Checking Lions franchise mode. And in this one, we are moving into free agency of year number two, our Stanley Cup championship season. And going into free agency, I think I would like to get an offensive defenseman if possible, because if we take a look at our current defensive core, obviously not that impressive. I mean, it did win us the Stanley Cup, but uh, not too many offensive threats here besides Shea, who last year got, as we take a look at his profile, 48 points. Now, he isn't consistent with that, unfortunately, so I don't know if, like, if, if he does it again, then great, but I'm not expecting him to, so I that's why I would like to target an offensive defenseman, as we take a look at our other guys, Jacob Larson, with 90 points last year, so he's not much of an offensive threat either, Cal Foote, 22 points, Jacob McCabe, uh, TBR, Gunnarsson, none of these guys are really offensive threats. I would like to move Haig as well. Because I don't feel like he's really going to get the chance. Because not only do, does he have six guys in front of him, he also has Hunt behind, right behind him, who is an offensive defenseman himself. We could use Hunt. I don't feel like Haig would really mesh with these guys. And then, of course, in the system, we have Bentley and Stillman, who have yet to be signed or to grow yet from the offseason jump. But they inevitably will soon pass Nick Haig on the depth chart. So I don't see him getting a chance here. So I would like to move him this offseason, if possible. I would also like to get a backup goalie. Obviously, we have Demko. We have Lyon. But Lyon is more of our minor league starter. And plus, we only have two goalies contracted right now. So we kind of need to sign a goalie anyway. And as far as forwards, I don't think there's really much work to be done at the moment. Because, first of all, you have that second line that was absolutely lethal last year of Duclair, Yeltsin, and Nemestikov. I mean, they were all absolutely fantastic. Nemestikov with 50 assists. That's why he's making 9.25. Hope he's worth it this season. Janssen, I believe that is around 60 points. 60, Yeah, 63 points. And Duclair with a 72-point season. So there's no point in trying to get anybody for the second line. No point in trying to break up, break up that line at all. And then the first line, of course, is Aronson and Wenberg. They are undoubtedly on our first line. And it's going to kind of going to be a toss-up between Richie and Danielson. I'm not entirely sure who I want on that line yet. I think it's going to depend on chemistry. But nonetheless, I think our top six is set between those guys. And then for the third line, you have Hints, and then whoever isn't on the first line of Richie and Danielson, and then Donato. And then you also have Bluger. So I think Bluger would be on the fourth line. And then I also want to go out and get Zajac and Hartman back from free agency, who we had to release, because I, I believe we can get them for cheaper than if we would have signed them in the re-sign stage. So that is my plan going to free agency. Nothing too big, I, I don't think. <laughs> but I, I would like to... T my main target in free agency is going to be an offensive defenseman, for sure. And then, as well, we have to re-sign our head coach, Moro, as we tried to last episode, but uh, the game, for whatever reason, didn't let us because we didn't have enough budget but I did a test run afterwards. Like, I just tested it out and didn't save. And apparently, <laughs> Moro re-signed with us in free agency. So, I don't know what that was about. I, I have a feeling that was a glitch. So, with that being said, let us go out and hire him once again. I could have sworn Moro was a forward coach, wasn't he? He definitely was a forward coach. <laughs> I know for a fact he was a forward coach. I think I'm going to reset. Okay, so I backed out of the file, came back in. Let's let's just check what Moro is. Yeah, I knew it. For a coach. How does that make... That, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, this game. All right, well, whatever. Let's advance to July 1st now. Luckily, I didn't do anything previously, so we didn't lose anything of significance. But still, that's kind of perplexing. So <laughs> let's see what happens now as we advance to July 1st once again. Let's see what he wants. He wants five years. Uh, just to be safe, I'll give him, like, five mil. Just to make sure he comes back, because we definitely need this guy back after what he was able to do for our roster last year in the way of chemistry and, of course, in the way of winning us the Stanley Cup. And now we need a new assistant coach, because our previous assistant coach wanted to be the head coach, and he wouldn't sign for even the maximum contract. So I, I guess we'll just have to look for a new one here. And it's going to be a defensive teaching specialty because that's what our previous assistant coach was. 
and I want to keep things as similar as possible. So as we take a look, Borodziak, our, our former assistant coach, actually wants to be an AHL head coach. I don't know why it said he wanted to be an NHL head coach. So I guess I'll offer him again as an assistant coach. And we'll see what happens this time in free agency. Because considering what happened with the head coach, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, our assistant coach here was also glitched in some way. All right, so now that all that's over, let's go and see who is in for agency here. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> As I speak of offensive defensemen, John Klingberg available in free agency. Well, I mean, we're certainly a, <laughs> an attractive place to play now that we've won the Stanley Cup, so... But the thing is, we kind of don't have enough cap at the moment, but we do have a lot of dead cap in the form of Okpozo and I believe Lucic and Lad as well. So as we take a look at uh, forwards and just sort by salary, uh, yeah, we have Okpozo at a, on a $6 million deal for one more year. Then you also have, I believe, in the minors, yeah, Lad and Lucic also on one-year deals. So it's possible that we could maybe trade them at half their salary to be able to sign Klingberg. So as a matter of fact, I think that's what I'm going to do, at least for one of them. So it may as well be Lad here. He's not going to be of any use to us, not even for depth, because he's a 75 overall. I'd rather keep Opozo and Lucic. So we'll retain half of his salary, and we'll just see what team wants him. Calgary is actually below the cap floor, so maybe we could give him to Calgary in exchange for just seventh. That's all I would really want out of this. And I'm sure that's all they would be willing to give up post-trade. Yeah, I didn't think so. We're going to have to give up picks just to get him off our team here. I'll give him a fifth and lad for a seventh just to get the cap off our team. So there you go. Ooh, but then again, we do have to sign Zajac. We have to sign Hartman. We have to sign a backup goaltender. I don't know if Klingberg is happening. As nice as he would be. That's an expensive signing. <laughs> I'm going to go after Malcolm Subban. He has a really solid save percentage last year. 930 save percentage, two shoutouts, 18 wins, and five losses in 29 games. So you really can't go wrong there. Uh, we will approach him with an offer, and I'll give him, well, he does want a lot of money. Maybe someone who's a bit cheaper, who has around the same save percentage. We could always just get Kincaid back, I suppose. I don't think he's too expensive. Yeah, he only wants 1.25, so... And you know what? He was solid last year. He got us the wins. So we may as well just get him back. I'll give him 1.4 for one year. So here's Zajac. He's an 81 overall right now. He, of course, put up 40 points last year. He was incredible on faceoffs. So I would definitely like to get him back for this team. He was a big part of our success last year. So I'll give him, yeah, three mil sounds about right for one year. And Ryan Hartman. He had some clutch goals during the playoffs. Seven to be exact. Oh, only one assist. But. He scored a lot of those goals in some clutch moments. Two game winners as well. Two power play goals and 22 hits. Definitely played a role in our Stanley Cup championship. So I would like to get him back one year. Yeah, I don't think Klingberg is happening. 3.35 should be fine. So Arizona actually does want Lucic here. So we may as well see if we can get them to take him. We'll try to get a six back from him. Proposed trade? No? Okay. How about the seventh? So we're going to have to add in, I suppose, a sixth proposed trade. There it is. Columbus is also way below the cap. They're at like 55.8, so they could definitely afford to take on a Pozo for one year, especially at a reduced cap. So we'll just, once again, try to get a seventh back for him. I mean, he was solid <laughs> for those five games that he played last year, but he didn't really do, well, he didn't do anything in the playoffs because we didn't play him. So proposed trade. Yep, as I figured, we're going to have to give up something here. We'll give up Calgary's seventh proposed trade. There it is. So even after all that, we only have 16.6. .6. I don't think that's going to be enough. Because we remember, we approached Zajac, we approached Hartman, we approached uh, backup goaltender and Kincaid. So I think altogether that that already is a good six or seven mil between those three. I, I don't think it's happening. I don't think Klingberg is happening. And it's not like we need to force it either, right? I mean, we won the Stanley Cup with this roster, but he would be nice to have for sure. Nemesnikov, you're killing me, bud. You, you, <laughs> you better be you better be worth that 9.25 with 
with Klingberg available in free agency. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I don't think Klingberg's happening. It's just, it would cause more problems than he's worth, you know, because it would, it would give us roster issues, like moving players up and down. And of course, not to mention he wants nearly 12.5 for six years. And I personally don't think he's worth that much. I mean, every player is, of course, going to get overpaid in free agency, but I don't feel like paying that much, honestly, for that long. So who we're going to go for instead is a guy on one year, Mark Giordano, 88 overall still, and he's put, he's still putting up, even despite his age, he's still putting up 40-point season in the NHL. And unlike Klingberg, he also hits, and that's important for me, uh, especially being a, a playoff contender, or I guess a cup contender at this point, since, you know, we won the cup last year. This This makes sense. It really does. He could play with Shea on the first line, and then once Stillman's ready to go for the first line, he can replace Giordano. So it, it's, it honestly makes sense, and he's affordable. <laughs> Only wants 6.6 for one year. So we'll give him, just to make sure that we get him, because he has Winnipeg interested in him, I'll give you 7.1. So that being said, let's see who signs, and hopefully our coach <laughs> resigns as well, because that's, honestly, that's going to be the biggest resigning of this uh, of this offseason is getting our coach Morrow back. And we are now on July 6th. We have signed everybody, including our head coach, which I actually had to renegotiate with him. As uh, <laughs> as you can see, we have given him the maximum salary possible. And clearly what happened before with not being able to sign him due to the budget was just a glitch of some sort because we are now $9 million <laughs> over the salary budget. For coaches. So now let's do a review of our roster before heading into the regular season. We have Demko and Kincaid in goal. On defense, you have Giordano, who signed for one year at 7.1. Shea, Larson, Foot, McCabe, TVR, and Hunt. In the system, you have Gunnarsson, Haig, who we still need to trade. And then, of course, Bentley, Stillman. Hopefully, they get some good growth over the offseason. And as it forward, we have Duclair, Yatsen, Nemestikov, Richie, Wenberg, Aronson, Hintz, Danielson, Donato, Zajac, Bluger, Hartman, Kampf, and in the system we have Amadio and Elaine. And then of course there's Hakarainen, but as we saw, as we've seen before, he is all over the place with his attributes. I'm not expecting him in the NHL, honestly. So that being said, I think we will we'll find a trade for Haig, and then we will move on to the regular season. So after looking through all the offers that were sent for Nick Haig, Tampa's offer is by far the best, with a second and a fourth being involved except that trade. And we're now in the preseason of year number three. Let's check out the growth that was had over the offseason. So in goal, you have Demko, who's now an 85 from his performance from last season. Of course, that includes the Stanley Cup run, as he had a 926 in 21 games, and Kincaid stayed at 81. On defense, you have Giordano, 88, Shea, 85, Larson, 82, Foot, 81, TVR, McCabe, and Hunt. And then in the system, Gutterson is a 78. We'll check on our prospect growth afterward. And at forward, you have Duclair, 87, Janssen, 86, Nemestikov, and Ritchie, and Aronson, all 85. Okay, so Aronson got a little bit of growth, not too much, not as much as I was expecting, but uh, still. A little bit of growth, so he should still be on the first line this year. Wenberg stayed in 84. I'm shocked that Wenberg stayed in 84, uh, considering his assist total last year. So, uh, yeah, I, I think he should have been at least an 86. Same thing for Aronson, but whatever. Hence, 83. Danielson, 82. Donato, 82. Hartman, Bluger, Camp, Zajac is a 79 now. So now let's check on our prospects. So unsigned. Okay. All right. Like to see it. Bentley is a 77 now. 85 offensive warriors. I still can't get over that. The uh, the offensive and force of defenseman. He could be a potential gem, I'm telling you. W one more season there in the U.S. League, w I think would do him so good. Especially considering he's a, an enforcer. I think he would struggle offensively in the AHL. So I want to give him as much offensive development time as possible. So that's why we're going to leave him in the U.S. League. Stillman is a 77 as well. I think he could use another year as well in the U.S. League. Lambos is up to a 70 at 19 years of age, so he's making some good progress. Radulov up to a 67. Daugherty grew to a 66. Now remember, Daugherty was one of the guys who we drafted a couple of years ago who I believe started as a 48 
something overall around there. And he's, he saw some massive growth. And a goal, you have McCutcheon, 70 overall. And now to close things out, we are going to assign our captains. So I think the first alternate is going to go to Brady Shea. He had a solid year last year. Our second alternate is going to be none other than Alexander Wenberg, centering that first line with Aronson last year very well. Had a career year. And of course, the captain has got to be none other than the rookie sensation, Devin Aronson. That being done, end things off here. And the next one, we will get on with your number three.